Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to share with you a couple of picture book projects that I am currently working on. And I'm very excited to film this episode because I think this is my first proper picture book related content. My channel is going to be mainly about picture books or children's books. Um, I think I'm going to say picture book from now on because one, it's easier to pronounce and two, it covers a wider range than children's books. A picture book is a book made out of pictures and it may or may not be targeted towards children. So yeah, picture book it is. But yeah, there are a few projects that I am working on at the minute and I want to first say that these are self-initiated personal book projects. I don't have an agent nor do I have a publisher yet. I have about four to five book ideas. Some of them I just literally just have an idea of what it's gonna be and some of them I have actually already started designing characters and even kind of roughly sketched out a storyboard or thumbnail. Um, but today I'm going to share with you two of those projects because those are the ones that I'm trying to put together a book pitch to send to an agent this year. So basically these two book projects are my goal for this year. One of the books I am working on together with my American cousin who has written the text. It is a beautiful text which rhymes and it's like a poem and I just absolutely love it. The other book I have come up with a story myself. I haven't written out the manuscript fully yet. I have a draft but um, yeah, writing is way more difficult for me than painting the pictures. So yeah, that is going to take me a little bit of time to finalize the text. But one thing I have learned is that in order to put together a book pitch, you don't need to have everything finalized. Um, I think you don't even have to have a fully written out manuscript because we illustrators, we are not trained authors or writers. Um, as long as we have a good idea and a rough draft, you can always pitch it and then you can refine the text together with the agent or publisher. Um, to be honest, I am not 100% sure how this all works yet, but my point is you don't need to struggle to create the perfect text on your own before you are even able to show it to anybody as long as you have a good idea and enough visual materials such as thumbnails, a dummy and character sheets and maybe one or two original spreads you can go ahead and try showing it to professional people. I am going to share with you here how I try to find an agent and try to find a publisher for these book projects in the future. So I hope you stay tuned and join me along the way. But yeah, anyways, um, why don't you grab yourself one of your favorite beverages? I have my tea right here and let's get started. So the first book I am going to talk about is the one that I'm doing with my cousin and it's called If I Were a Creature in the Sea. Um, this is all that I have done so far for this book um, and also these are my initial sketches. So I started working on this book last year March and we did manage to put together a pitch and send it to a publisher 
who my cousin got introduced to through a friend. Um, we didn't hear back. Um, and that's fine because when we looked at their website and their books, we kind of thought it wasn't the best fit to begin with, but we sent it anyways because why not? Um, can't hurt. Although it can hurt the self-esteem a little bit. Um, but yeah, we sent it and we didn't really get any feedback. Um, but that's fine. I am revisiting this project. I wasn't super happy with it anyways. But yeah, let me show you this project. To be honest, I am not sure what's the best way to take you through these, um, this material here. And that's why I ditched the living room and returned to my studio. Okay, here I have a bunch of sketches. So first thing I did was I just really roughly sketched out little thumbnails just to try out different compositions. As you can see, I have a few sharks and then a few octopus scenes. I mean, it's so rough that it's almost hard to really see what it is, but yeah, it's just how I work. Um, another octopus and these were jellyfish. So yeah, a lot of these types of super rough sketches, little thumbnails. And then I moved on to a more proper sketch. It could be, I would say this is kind of like a dummy. And I even printed out the text here, although I didn't um, do that for the whole book. I started out like this, but then towards the end, it becomes super rough like this again. But yeah, for example, I first um, designed the first spread like this. It started out with this sketch. I had two variations. I chose this one, but then later on I changed it to this version and you will later see that I did a colored painting based on this version. So, but anyways, this was the whole base sketch stage. And then what I did was I, oops, I redid the sketches all in the actual size of the book and um, yeah, I have them all sketched out big and also I shaded everything which I normally never did before but I thought I want to do a value study for some reason this time I did that so I spent a ridiculous amount of time on these sketches. And in here I have a few um, studies or like warming up sketches in color. It's really not a lot and I think because I skipped this part, like I didn't really spend enough time in experimenting and trying out different styles. I did struggle later when I worked on the actual paintings. This here I did to try out gouache. I was struggling with gouache and I wish I had kept the disastrous attempt, but I think I threw it away. <laughs> So here I really tried using gouache more like watercolor. In the failed version I used it very thick, almost like acrylic, and it was a total disaster. But here I diluted it a lot and used it like watercolor and I think I got more used to using gouache by trying it out this way. Um, this here is also practicing gouache and also experimenting with the sea plant 
textures and designs. So yeah, this was kind of fun. And I have a fish here. Um, yeah, here are a few more fish studies, I would say. Um, yeah, I thought this is a lot of fun uh, painting fish and I think I figured it out. I know what I'm doing. I have a certain style. So let's just dive in into the real thing is what I thought. But then when I was actually painting things in a setting meaning like in a actual spread it wasn't really working as i thought it would okay so this was the very first painting i did for this project and it's based on this sketch and this one i kind of did as a warm-up i wasn't really too serious about it to put it in the portfolio or in the um final book pitch and when I worked on this I had just come across a illustrator and um, I was very heavily influenced by her style because I thought her work was just breathtaking and um, she had a book about a jellyfish so I have to admit my jellyfish was very influenced by hers <laughs> but yeah I did this and I thought my fish looked a little bit too colorful or at least there's too many colors going on overall in this whole painting. So yeah, it was a good experiment but I wasn't super happy with it. The next painting I did were the seahorses. I decided to do the seahorse page to put in the pitch. Here I did the background in watercolor. I actually like how this wash turned out even though it's a little streaky here. Um, watercolor washes are very difficult I have to say and I did that by masking out the seahorses and all. So overall I'm not super happy with the color especially this part because this is the main attraction, but I feel like the color is just too pale and um, it's not really vibrant, especially the contrast between the coral tree and the yellow seahorses. I think I kind of botched it here. <clears throat> and also when I was painting these sea plants, I wasn't really, I didn't really think it through. So I just kind of, did whatever and yeah at the end I thought it doesn't look super interesting and I think that's when I decided to do this so I have a better idea of how to design sea plants so then I created this version and as you can see this time uh, the coral tree and the seahorse says they are different in color um, but um, and the background here again I think turned out pretty okay however I don't know this painting I tried a gouache the Holbein Acryla gouache for the first time so my seahorses they are actually opaque they're not transparent anymore so they're not in like watercolor they are in this more opaque acrylic gouache and yeah I wasn't super happy with this style I guess because it does it didn't feel like me if that makes any sense so yeah again this midway I decided mm, no it's not what I want so then I did this one so this time I decided to completely change the color palette and actually I don't know when but midway I decided I should maybe do some color studies seriously instead of just 
painting over and over again, I should try to figure out what's the best color combo. So I did something like this, but the funny thing is, I think I decided on this version, but then I don't know why I created this version. Um, yeah, it's a mystery to me, but at least I tried to prep a little. But anyways, I did this and this time I did the seahorses in my usual watercolor technique, but the background I did in gouache and it's opaque. It has no gradient or transparency nothing it's just a very flat pink color which i ended up not liking because it's it's too flat and also the seahorses they got a little too dark um they look very toasted so overall i thought oh the colors they don't look vibrant either it like the colors look a little dead I mean, I spend a lot of time in like giving my seahorses lots of details and like make them delicate. So I like that, but overall, I thought mm, not quite right. So then I think at this stage, I made this guy because I just wanted to loosen up and get back to my normal watercolor style and just, you know, get a little out of my head, if that's the right expression. So this was a little, like, let's go back to the roots kind of a piece. <laughs> um, yeah. So after this, oops, I made this here. And this doesn't have a colored background because I later assembled the background on Photoshop. So I created the background separately because I was just really struggling with keeping the foreground objects in watercolor and also giving the background a watercolor gradient and all that and I really didn't want to use a lot of masking fluid so I tried out the method where you just paint the foreground separately and do the background like this where you don't have to worry about any objects and then I combined them on Photoshop which is this version and it was interesting and i do like it however it feels like it lacks a little bit in weight it's just a little too i think it has a quirky whimsical feel to it but i feel like there is something missing and i'm not quite sure what it is but i don't know but i'm glad i tried it out because this kind of technique where you combine background and foreground digitally is something that i wanted to try out for a while and i'm also kind of happy with the sea plants i did in this version yeah here the sea plants aren't just haphazardly thrown in to fill out empty spots this here looks way more thought through and designed then I was sick of painting seahorses for a while, so I decided to pick another page and I picked the page with the hermit crabs. So I did this here, but midway, uh, again, I thought that the colors are again too muddy. Although now that I look at it after a while, it doesn't look that bad and um, yeah, but I think at that time, all my head was all about colors, colors being muddy. So yeah, I think here I wasn't super happy with how dark this area turned out and not enough texture. Yeah, I actually really like this guy here. Uh, oh, but I remember not being happy with this color either because it's kind of, it's not a beautiful color, I guess. I don't know. I even wrote not bad oh yeah I wrote no texture yeah so I wrote down what I didn't like about it at that time and then I decided I should maybe try another subject this time maybe if I do an octopus things might go well so 
I picked the octopus page and um, yeah from the beginning I was sure that the octopus should be red and because it's spraying dark ink I thought this would look pretty cool the red and the dark gray so I tried it here I did watercolor in the background watercolor with a little bit gouache and wasn't really sure what I was doing and this was my first attempt and this is just a big disaster um, and at this point I was very frustrated and I felt like I just forgot how to paint anymore because um, here I don't know if you can tell but I went over it a lot of times and like the colors are very washed out and here for example talk about muddy colors like this is like this weird greenish gray color I mean this is totally not a pretty color and I managed to fill out every gray area with this weird I have to say puke color um, and even though I have some nice details here and there yeah this painting was uh, a big no-no and then I did this and by the way I changed the sketch from the octopus spraying ink at the dolphin to just the octopus but then having lots of sea plants down here to make the overall painting more pretty overall and give it more interesting texture and elements so i did this but then again i heavily messed up on the octopus i'm actually quite happy with how the ink turned out but yeah my octopus it was ruined because here again I am trying my hands on gouache I tried to give it some texture and but it just doesn't look organic it just looks very desperate and forced and the color again it's not a very pretty red so yeah midway I decided unfortunately it's not gonna work out again and then at this point I think I decided to look up some other artists interpretation of octopus because yeah I felt a little lost and then I came across this one illustrator whose illustration is totally different from my own style but I just absolutely fell in love with the colors he used the vibrant orangey red colors and the contrast with the purple and oh, I just absolutely fell in love with his color palette so I decided I will just make my octopus super vibrant too so this is the final version I did and this is actually the final piece that went into our initial pitch and I think it's all right now that I look at it I think it's maybe a little bit too vibrant for my taste but at the time after all those struggles with color and texture and gouache and whatnot I was actually pretty happy when I did this piece and here I did use partially some gouache but I used it more in a diluted way so I really started to get the hang of it more and I tried to make things as vibrant as possible and stay away from muddy colors as much as I could and I gave the octopus a more definite texture so it looks intentional and not like accidental and then I think I took a break from this project and I did take the Make Art That Sells children's book illustration course and there I learned for the first time that you actually create a character sheet where you show <clears throat> The characters emotions um, characters accessories and then basically like a visual sheet showing elements that are appearing in the book 
So I made these guys. And I think when I created these sheets, it's finally when I kind of found my style. Yeah, I was super happy with how these guys turned out and, and I felt like I have finally found a certain style I wanted to work in for the entire book. So then I created this here as the cover page. So I made it so that this part is the cover and this part is the back of the book. And um, it's featuring Cinnamon, <laughs> my dog. Um, and I do like this style a lot. I like the colors a lot. It's very pastel and um, with a pop of vibrant colors. So yeah, I think what I was trying to do was overall have it a little bit muted and in a pastel-like color, but then have certain accents that are very vibrant and pop out, like the important characters. So I like it in that aspect. However, when I later designed the cover with the text, I felt like it looked a little weak, not really strong enough. So I will have to like figure out what's the problem or what's exactly missing in this. One of the problem might be that I am scared to mess up again. So I am leaving the majority a little too bare. I mean, these rocks might need a couple more layers and more depth. But yeah, I was just too afraid to make things muddy and heavy and too dark again that I might have stopped too early. And um, I really like this little guy. Look at his little butt. <laughs> um, but yeah. Now let's move on to the other book, which is the book that I have come up with the story myself. This one doesn't have a fixed title yet. I am just personally calling it the pirate doggy book because it involves pirate dogs. So for this book project, I don't have much. I mean, this is pretty much it. This is my manuscript, which I have written mainly in Korean. And then I think I tried to give it an English translation because yeah, in English, Writing is difficult and then writing in English, that's just a no-no. And then again, I have a bunch of rough sketches where I just try out different compositions. Super, super rough. And then here I have my thumbnails. There are a few scenes where I am not 100% sure. This story involves a dog shelter um, and I've never been to a real dog shelter. So it was very hard to imagine the space. So I'm thinking now that maybe I should visit a real shelter and, you know, do the research instead of just looking up images on Google. So that's one thing I am thinking about. And what else? So yeah, this is my main character, the pirate doggy. Hold on. Yeah, I think I have more sketches in this sketchbook. Oops. Nope. So here I did more of those little thumbnail doodles, figuring out different compositions. Um, this is a scene where the pirate doggy fires a coconut as a cannonball. So I was trying out different things here. And um, here I think I finally found my main dog character. It's a poodle and his name is Alfie. He is going on an adventure with this character who is Tommy. So, yeah, 
these are some animal shelter designs and then I drew a bunch of pirate ships I could not decide on the sail shape so here I have Alfie and Tommy on a pirate ship and I found it quite difficult to simplify a pirate ship so I'm still working on this and here I did some simple studies of Tommy yeah it's, I'm not sure about the style I just experimented a little bit and um, these dogs I did actually a few years ago because I I had this pirate doggy story idea for many many years now so I painted a little pirate dogs um, yeah I actually really like this guy he doesn't look super smart though she does she's a badass this is something else but I really like her too yeah but anyways um I sketched out some more pirate dogs they are really grungy looking and some more sketches but yeah with my pirate dog story this is all I got so but the good thing is unlike my C book this one I am actually pretty satisfied with how my thumbnail um, storyboard looks so I think I might be able to have more progress on this one soon all I need to do is figure out how to do the animal shelter design and then I think I'm pretty much good to go to creating a proper dummy and pick one scene and paint the colored spread and a few other bits and pieces and then I'll be ready to put together a pitch hopefully these two are the main two picture book projects that I am focusing on this year and I just wanted to add that the pirate doggy it's a story about a dog that had to get surgery to take an eyeball out and um, I don't want to go into too much detail of the story but basically he becomes a super cool pirate dog and goes on an adventure with his friend Tommy and they rediscover their friendship so to speak I hope you guys enjoyed this episode it was definitely more challenging than I thought to put this all together but I hope I was able to introduce you to the projects that I am working on at the minute so that in the future when I upload related content you will know what it's all about. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and if you like to see more, please subscribe and I hope to see you all again soon in my next video. Bye!